Welcome back to another episode of Wildermuth. When we last left off, we have an incursion currently breaking down our defenses. We need to really take care of that. We're going to send everybody back to here. I don't know how long it takes to repair this. 43 days? That's going to take too long. So we need to gather everybody back here, including you two. Although we can actually give you, we can let you stay there for 10 days or so. Get this partially completed and then come back now, I believe. So we gather absolutely everybody here. Everybody's about 10 to 12 days away. Five days. Defenses withstood an attack, which is perfect. We all arrived, but you finally got another attack in. Strength of 10 against our party of 5. Do I let them attack once more? I think we let them attack once more. And now we defend. So they're now a strength of 8 against our party of 5. Again, I don't know exactly what the strength versus, you know, the defense metric kind of is there. Like, a strength of 8 means there are 8 members in their party? I'm not too sure. We'll find out. Morthagi have come. How should we respond? I have to go for the charge again. I love the extra bonus damage. Does it work? And it works this time. Great stuff. It's just such good extra damage. They're plus 2 damage slash potency for 3 turns, which is huge. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six and maybe two spawning later on. Because we have no more defenses, it's kind of just small barricades and the like. We do have Stilney, Kemdred, helping us out as well. Um, pickaxe wielder and a pickaxe wielder. Okay, not that useful, just being honest. Um, I think, again, we maybe leave the wardrobe. So we skip across. We ignore the west side and we move all the way over to the east. So with that in mind, we do have Mei Mei who can move close enough to almost get an attack, but not quite. Danny, Splinter Blast, Splinter Blast. You cannot Splinter Salvo though, can you? That's only on Beth that can Splinter Salvo. With the, yes, that one there, Splinter Salvo. Huge damage if we do. I'm also wondering, can we get close enough to do lots of other damage? We do have the Discus, which is huge damage. We could do it over here as well. Um, the Butler takes a butt ton of damage as well. But not with the Splinter Blast. We have the Ruined Arch for 11 damage. 1, 2, 3, 4. 11 damage would be a lot onto you. Redia, again, I think we ignore everybody over here. I don't know what the Coachman does. Charges towards an enemy and throws them behind himself. So I don't know how far that moves, but that could be quite sketchy be a little bit cautious of that um we just want to be able to discus over here i believe so i think we move far enough over to this side that we can start to buff up our other party members as remember we are focusing on this eastern side first we go for the ruined arch it's a massive arch we can discus at the butler or at batch b and maybe we just go for batch b to begin with good damage and we go for you once you move in closer remember we can kind of ignore you to start with and then go for the extra damage later on. Speaking of which, I think we move everybody across this way. We could ambush as somebody gets closer as well, so maybe that's something that we look to do. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do for this spec deck. We move you across to here. We go for an ambush shot over here. And that should almost certainly kill you when you come through. That's my hope anyway. Mei Mei can move over to here. That's such a great name. I'm so glad that I managed to find you. Um, we move you back a little bit. You are the tankier unit though, so I think we sit in front because you can tank a bit more armor type shots. We go over to here. We interfuse with... The discus isn't too bad. Then we could rock shield somebody as well, but I think we care more about the splinter blast, honestly, and we're going to do it this way. So we splinter blast up here to the north. And we shred a couple of your armor as long as you don't block it. Three armor shred. That's very nice. So still me. I think we move you up in front as well here just in case. But we'll go you to this side. And Guardian. We'll bring still me across here. Um, you have to wait because you don't have a Guardian mode. We'll bring Kemdred over here to kind of tank some shots in case the second spec deck tries to move close. And uh, let's see. Cone of Fire will not reach anybody. Even if we move up there, I don't think it's the right course of action. So I think we might just move over to here. And assuming that you move all the way down, use all of your movement to get close to us, then maybe, just maybe a guardian over there works for us. And we will just wait over here. The Spectic's moving to the east. Batchby's moving to the west. Watchman's going to move straight in. Great block by Danny. 
Okay, the wardrobe of course is constructing items, that's kind of what we anticipated. The butler's just giving itself and others temporary HP. There's the coachman stomping over things. Is it going to charge or is it using all of its action there? There we go. So you managed... Oh, I should have... That's my own fault. I should have ambushed over here because the way that I ambushed meant that you could get the cover from being behind the pillar. Whereas if I did it here, you would have got the clean shot and been able to take you out. That's my own fault. No one to blame for that but myself. Why don't we move over to here? 75 damage over there. On Beth can discus over there as well. We have the Watchman, of course. So I think we start maybe move May May over to this side, as we will have more enemies spawning here shortly. But I think this is fine. We then use a shield share. We attack you from this side. Does that count as an attack or not? It does. Then we attack you from this side with Still Me, and then we go back to May May on this side, which finishes you off and has a great chance to stun. It didn't, but it had a great chance to. So that was a good use of Still Me. I'm happy with that. We now could go over to there, which then probably ricochets over to there. We have you over here as well. How much movement? You're probably going to charge at us, aren't you? So we have to be a little bit cautious of that. We could interfuse over here, another discus. We could go for the splinter salvo over there as well. Danny could interfuse. Has already interfused there. We do have the barricade there as well. I wonder if we jump over here and leap behind. Because what I'm thinking is we keep moving to our right. We just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Um, we can of course pin you as well. Maybe that's what we do over here. We do know that the Watchman's over there, but we still have the Spectix, the two Spectix across here as well. So maybe we move you over to here instead. We take a shot here. We got 86% chance. We go for this here, I think. As soon as I saw him move, I saw him start to move, hunch down and get the jump out the way. And I was thinking, you little bastard. Also, I should have used my jump jaws before doing that attack. So that's my own fault for not doing that. Still, I partially blame the game too. You know, you could have you could have given it to us. You could have just been a little bit a little bit nicer. Let's go for the discus. With the discus, let's give our rock shield to you. Let's then discus. We could go for you guys as well. I think we go for you instead, but that doesn't really do much, does it? I think we move you across. I would really love to be able to jump over and we can jump over to here. So let's do just that. We can then shield share for one action or we just attack you twice and that way we save our shield share, which I think is the right way to go about it. We then strike you again. Good stuff. Now Red Air is kind of off on his lonesome, but I'm hoping that's not going to be too much of an issue for us. We can rock shield somebody else if we want to, or we can start discussing. On Beth is probably one of the weaker characters that we've got here, so let's move you back. We still have the two enemies down here though, which is a concern. So that's a huge damage discus, and I think that's how we deal with you. So we go here. Nearby area with their tooly teeth. I don't think it's going to be enough to reach you, but hopefully this reaches from you to you. No. But it does finish you off at least. 12 damage was pretty huge. That's one of you dealt with. Um, Kimdred still has the attack. Danny. Your next move is going to end your turn. So we either go for the attack, which is a decent amount of damage, or we... Rock shield somebody else. We could try and rock shield Kemdru to keep you alive. Which I don't hate the idea of. But I think we just let you die. I'm sorry. But it must be done. Good damage. Bit of blocked. But maybe you stun. Maybe you kill her with the stun. Nope. You did good though. You did good kid. Oh, you actually left you. Okay, Bara takes the damage. Bara, you better not die. Okay, still me is fine. You get thrown back. Probably going to get killed by the butler now. Sweep the floor is fine. I tell you what, Bone Stitch, you're going to give him some temporary HP. Now we know that you're going to be spawning quite a few over there. We have a double Samelia spawn over there, which is not great because behind is where we were kind of hoping that we'd be safe for a little bit longer. Turns out that is not the case. But what we can do is move up and take out the spec deck. Exactly what we will do. Ah, oh, we have fun here. We have fun here. It could hit you and then it might bounce to you. 
We could hit you and guarantee the kill and then go to you afterwards. Hmm. I'm wondering. Who has the... Who has the splinter blast? Is it you? Earth scribe? No. It is Onbeth. Onbeth has the elementalist, which is the splinter salvo. That requires going into two items. Oh, no, we can't. We're already maxed out on items that we can go to. So if we go for you, we can't fire it at you. If we go for you, we can fire it at you. And that's good damage. I just need to stop speaking, clearly. I, I don't even bloody know anymore. Just, I'm losing my mind over here. Ambush is great. Shot is great. We can jump draw, which brings you over to here. We then move you back. We then move you back. We then take out you. We could go for you as well, but I'm wondering what Red Air should go for. Like, if he moves over here... The issue is the Samelia is then going to start wailing onto you as well, isn't it? Do we bring you across to these guys? No, because then you'll be wailed on on that side as well. So we could just move up to the north of here, or we move over to here. Oh, we do... Okay, we do get the Interfuse, or the Adjacency bonus, being next to you. So I think we just go for the Strike. Although, do we go for the Shot here first? I mean, we could go try and take you out. I think we just have to take you out though, right? Or, no, we go like this. Okay, now you can attack. Perfect. Okay, so, Mei Mei, you over to here, you attack there. That's a stunt damage, although I hope that you now can't be hit by there. That means that Bara takes the shot here. Please don't miss. Um, we now strike you with here. 100% chance. Six damage. Oh, still me. When were you back there? Thank you, still me. I didn't even realize. <laughs> Oh, I completely forgot about you. Hey, that's pretty good. Um, let me just rock shield, and let me rock shield Bara in case they start wailing onto her. Rather than the attack. I don't think the attack is going to make that much difference, but hey. It actually worked out alright. We lose the courage so we don't get the bonus damage any longer. Samelia took cover. Temporary HP also worked out for us. We did some damage back to you though. You're going to do the same. Might get a shot back. There we go. I mean, if you guys want to keep doing that, I'm fine with that. Construct another enemy. Your pins, do you get to attack? You do, but you only semi-hurt Mei Mei. What is the wildling doing? Nothing. That's great. Okay. We could throw a fire. Oh, I want the Infernal Rain, though. Who has that? Onbeth has that, doesn't she? Yes. The Infernal Rain. So I think we now move down to the south. Oh my god, they're still spawning bloody Samelias? Jesus! Jesus H Christ. Okay, we do have the coachman right in the middle of us. That's that's our concern right now. So we can use our swift action to bash you. We can melee you, but we'd have to jump into range first. And I think we do jump into range down here. But does that also allow us to strike here? Not quite, but we do cone of fire. We then strike you. No stunt damage, unfortunate. We then strike you from this side. That's not great damage though, is it? That's the end of the turn as well. We can only shield shear once per turn. Um, Bara could go for the jump draw just to try and pin them back a little bit further, which I think we do go for. The shot. You guys are adjacent, so you guys have defensive bonuses, which is a real damn shame. Onbeth could go for this one here and try and throw it here. Let's just try it. Or do we go for you instead? No, we can't. We could go for you. That's a lot of damage to you, actually. So maybe we wait for that. We go for the attack from this side first. Good. Although I'm feeling like... No, that's probably worth going for. I think we have to take you out, don't we? We attack you here. Or do we go for Bara attacking here? Or the ambush shot or on beth attacking from here can't reach it on beth attacking from here can reach um danny what the hell are you going for danny um you could try that as well you could try the barricade you could interfuse with the fire throw the fire for six damage which probably would take out the wildling but i think the main thing now is that we take out you so how do we deal with that well we move over to here, or even here for example, almost it, that's almost it, 
Not quite though. Kemdred? Does Kemdred finish you off? Probably not. We kind of want Kemdred just to kind of be there to take a hit, right? Although, maybe between the two of you we get you. So let's try over here. We smack you. We shred. We go over here. We park up next to Red Air. We smack you. We shred. That's you dealt with. May May can now Guardian. Although you might actually die here if we're not careful. Um, we do have this wall which can... I don't know. Help out. <laughs> I don't really know what we're doing here. Um, Danny does have decent magic resist though. So I think that's what we're going to be working towards. We do gain extra warding when we go next to this mossy rock, for example. The campfire though could probably kill you. So I think we have to go for the kill, don't we? We do still have Bara though. What is Bara doing? Could go for the shot there. Could go for a shot onto one of you two. Possibly you there. We just go for the shot and the hopeful kill. There we go. We get the kill. That means the clamps are saved for the rest. We leave Danny here as kind of an invitation to attack you. We soak up the campfire. Sing our campfire song. Not a great chance of success. And indeed it didn't succeed. You're going to survive with 1 HP or no, you actually you get the warding. So, Kindred's dead. We expected that. We're okay with that. The welding moves up, doesn't get an attack. The Smelia moves back. Bara dodges, gets a return shot. Return shot hits. Smelia. Return shot on Bara. So the Bara positioning is huge, as is that stun pack. So taking out one of those on their turn is fantastic. What about here? You get an attack as well. Bara returns fire. Another stun. No such luck, but still. Get some good luck earlier. We get an attack with that. So actually that worked out fantastic there. Mei Mei, well done. That was a poor move by that guy, but it worked out for us. So I'm not going to complain. 83% chance to kill you. I'm wondering, can we get you both in one go? Probably not. Probably not. Still me can move around here though and attack from the rear. And also we'll shred in the process. Don't really care if that wildling gets a shot on you anyway. Just try. We do also, we do not have the zealous leap. Excuse me. We can move you across to here though, Maymay, but we don't want to lose you as the thinking. We've got to be a little bit cautious. I think we now move everybody across to this side, but before we do that, do we try and take you guys out? I think the answer to that is yes. We interfuse with this. We then discus onto you. Yeah, onto you. Good damage. And it actually pins back, shreds the armor. Does that armor shredding allow us to finish you off now? Looks like it will. Perfect. Great. Okay. I, I really hoped that I wasn't going to be eating my own words there. I was a little bit, you know, worried about that for sure. Now, if we go here, that gives Mei Mei extra damage. We get the inspiration. We also have the discus, which we can throw from here. But that's, oh, I should have used your discus because you're already full up, aren't you? So let's see, we move here. We either attack the Samelia or we go for you. Let's go over to here and see what our options are. Actually, let's undo that. We've got a few more undos. We can move all the way over to here, which then provides the adjacency bonus next to Mei Mei, but that doesn't matter because that's only physical. You've already got that adjacency bonus anyway as well. So maybe I move here. No, I move here. Yep, yeah, I know what I'm doing now. Move here. We shield share you. And then do you have enough to kill you? You do. Well, that's okay because we still have another option here. There we go. We get the stunt damage. Everyone's impressed back there. On Beth just decides to withdraw on this one now. Because that's no longer that useful for us. And um, what else do we go for? Honestly, I think you just move up here and stand behind the tree. So the Wildling comes. Still me dies with the melee attack. Wildling has the magic fire attack then. Is that what they're going to use? Who knows? Yes. Mei Mei is alive. The burning's going to hurt though. You withdrew from that. I think we move Mei Mei back to um, be safe back here. She's a little bit too hurt to keep fighting. Nobody's going to spawn from the east or anywhere else now. All of our enemies are just across on the west hand side. So, the west hand side, the left hand side, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. We move across to here. Danny. 
interfuses with this item here. We can get the barrage, which might actually kill you on its own. We'll try. Nope. That's still fine. We move you over to here. And actually, I think we get Barra ready with an ambush shot, because this melee is going to move up a wee bit. So with that in mind, maybe we just move on Beth up a little bit. In fact, we could absolutely just discus you, couldn't we? We bring Red Air over to here. As far up as you can get, basically. We attack you from there. You're dealt with. Um, we now go for the ambush. We definitely won't get a hit with this, but it gives us a free attack next turn. We can move back to here as well. You know what? We will give the adjacency bonus to you as well. Just because. We now interfuse with the stone wall. That's nine damage. We might as well throw that towards you. And we might actually kill you in the process. There we go. I didn't even think about that as a possibility. But now we just focus on the wardrobe. Which is probably going to move away rather than closer. But that's okay. Now we just move our entire party upwards. So. We go here. And I think we just go for the kill onto you, don't we? So we leave over to here. We go for the hit. Now we focus on the wardrobe. So we can do our shield shares. We can do a whole bunch of splinter blasts. Whatever we really want to do, we can do now. The world is our oyster, as they say. So we can interfuse over here. Is that going to reach? I have no idea. We will try it anyway. I think it's probably going to be just shy. Yep. How did I know? Um, what else do we have? We do have this tree. We do have a campfire. We do have a splinter blast over there, but that's also going to do nothing. So I think we just move up. And uh, discus you once more. Good damage. Danny, can't really do anything. So might as well just move you up here as well. And the rest of the party just follows suit. So we move over to here. And actually, if we silk step, then we attack through armor next turn. So I think that's going to be well worth it. You can just sit by the cooking pot. And just... You know, because up a feast for the end of this battle, which is just around the corner. So we can hit you here. Can we reach you from here again? I actually can't remember. No, we cannot. Okay, we can swap weapons, however, and take a little range shot at you. A little cheeky. But it works. So we'll take a shot from you first. We pierce your armor. Now we attack from this side, which flanks. And we'll do two damage. Now we just discus... Throw that through you, 100% chance, should kill you, even gets the stunt damage. And we made it through another combat, so this one was a lot cleaner. Um, we didn't have anybody dying, or near death, or you know, Mei has got to level up too, our party member's getting a bit stronger. Broad swipes, Paladin, if ends her turn by moving she will automatically enter Guardian. That's pretty damn good, but I love the stalwart, and I think now, Mei Mei's going to be our tank up front. So stalwart does reduce movement speed. But the extra armor and warding that we get is just too good to pass up. Now we do have this that we want to repair. Why was that? Oh, that's gone back up, hasn't it? Okay, so we don't need the defenses. We're going to head down here and attack this area with all of our party members. They should heal up by the time they move. There is, um, they do heal at a much slower rate while they are moving. But I think Mei Mei with the extra tankiness should be absolutely fine. We are going to attack straight away. Maybe I should have patrolled for a little bit to make it a bit easier and to let Mei Mei heal a bit. Coming back. This is a waste of time. We still have a few hours of daylight. We should press on. We could all use the break. Tomorrow we fight, but tonight we drink. Come on, I'm buying the first round. So Red Air being a loner again. On Beth following. Maybe I should give him some space. Maybe we try and get him... Um, how about you mean the Sweeping Swallow? He's still angry. Hmm. Wow. Okay, there we go. Now he's a bit happier. Cunning. Ready and on Beth. Flanking attacks this comic F plus one damage. There we go. Okay, that's not too bad. That's a lot of enemies in a small confined area. That's a leaf spirit that we would like to catch as well. Not too many enemies just yet though. Of course you have the crossbow. We want you to switch across to that. I think we leap across. Maybe start wailing on them from here. Mei Mei can move up and start tanking them of course. But then again, we also have the option to interfuse either with the fire. And you know what? The fire is the way to go, right? So, how much damage is this with that fire if we interfuse? Six damage. But if we do it with Onbeth, it's more, isn't it? Nine damage. So, I think we go for this. Discus. No, we definitely go for the blaze. 
We end Fuse of the Blaze, we then throw the Blaze through to here, it does damage to... Good chance to kill you. You dodged it, but you both miss out on the Bone Link now. So that is good for me. Move over to here maybe. You can also go Denivan over here, maybe move this fire for us. Throws it down to here. Doesn't quite kill you, but you will burn on the start of your turn, so you are basically deceased, so that's fine. We move you over to here. We then shield share you. Tiger. We move Red Air over to here. We shield share you. There we go, that one worked. Now Mei Mei gets a regular attack. Or do we wait a little bit later? We do have the jump jaws. I think we go for an attack here. Followed by an attack by Red Air over here. Now, do you do enough damage to take you out? 83. What about if we go here? I can't actually see with the fire in the way whether this will be kind of extra bonus damage there. I think if I go over here it should definitely be. Yeah, it is definitely over here. So we're going to go over here. We're going to get the 100% chance to shoot you. Finish you off that way. That damage is indeed enough. The Spectic will burn on your turn, which is great. The Leaf Spirit's going to keep running away. But um, we see a wardrobe up there who's now announcing the alarm. The Coachman's going to be the one that we actually attack, though. Does that mean the Leaf Spirit can't get past you guys, though? He's stuck. Okay, that's actually surprisingly good for us. As we will move Mei Mei up to here. We will then enter our Stalwart. And you'll see that she goes from one armor, um, one warding up to four of both. Four of each. Four of both? Whatever. Um, Onbeth has the extra damage with our Infernal Rains. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to move up to here. I'm going to interfuse with this. Oiler. Steel Fire. That's all that we get to do? Okay. That's still worth it, I believe. Better than the Fungus, I believe. So Steel Fire. Or we Fire Leash. So Fire Leash is for the fire down here. Steel Fire throws it up here. We can throw you up here, which goes through the Coachman and probably kills the Sommelier. Okay, Smelia dodged it. That's fine though. The blaze will hurt you next turn. Mei Mei is up there and ready to probably start in guardian mode. Red Air could move back here. Maybe go for a cone of fire. Or we just go for a cone of fire up adjacent. Um, you go for mostly saw blades. So I think we want to pin you if we can at all. What does fungus do? Fungus, can you pin? Wild grasp. Yes, it does. It draws you in and then pins though is the issue. But it should only draw you in one. I get the feeling that if we go here, which we can do, we then interfuse with the fungus. We then try and pin you. 70%. Oh my god, he gets pulled all the way over here. That's not great. Actually, if we pin you in front, then I don't think the other creature can move past you. That's 75%. That's 56. I think we go for the higher chance. And it did pull you forward. So actually, if we leave the Sommelier there, then we actually might be A-OK. -okay. The issue is, can I be bothered leaving him there? That is a little bit risky. Um, we can definitely go for a cone of fire. Because that is a range of two. So if we move over here, we can then go cone of fire through you. And then light the coachman on fire. Hopefully. And indeed, we do have the coachman underneath. That Samelia is still alive. He's going to get a shot off at us. And that's going to be the only downside to this. You know, I wouldn't say it's a master plan. But it's, it's a plan that might work for us. Um, and I think we move you over here in case we do get some ranged attacks, and then Bara can get some attacks back um, as well. And I think, do we ambush? I think we ambush over here, and then if you don't move across there, Sommelier, then we get the free shot next turn. And um, we just guard in in case somebody does move into that spot. But I think the Leaf Spirit's blocked, the Sommelier can't really move. Nice shot there against you. And then you'll get the return shot as well, Bara. Good dodge though, good dodge. You, oh, you can charge throw food, but you going for one of our back ones is actually absolutely fine. There's a batch B2. But now we are attacking from both fronts, so that's my only concern. Leaf Spirit can now run through. I didn't realize you could go through fire, that's interesting. We can fire leash you, and we could throw you back that way if we wanted to. We could also go for some shots. I wonder if we just let you sit behind, or do we try and pin you back there as well? As we could maybe, if we have Danny for example, Wild Grasp, can only go to you guys. What about if we interfuse with one of these? So that could pin and deal damage to you. That shackles, 
It just depends on the chance to work, right? I think we go for the broken pots. I think we then move you up to here. And I think we then lay a shark trap back this way, because you shouldn't be able to charge anymore. And I think you will get caught in the fire this way. Or if not caught in the fire, you should get caught in that trap there. So, jump draw is good. We do have a shot over here as well. We of course want to do our AoE damage if we at all can. Fire leash here could do some damage again. Hmm. I think we go for the higher chance. Oh, I hit the leaf spirit. Oh no, did I kill the leaf spirit? Oh, I didn't realize that. Sorry, buddy. Okay, that objective is gone now. Which is what it is. We're going to go for a, an attack onto you. The batch B has melee attacks, doesn't it? Okay. So we've used both of our ones that can actually clamp them. Unless we throw our jump jaws up here, which I think I will do. Do we move bar up the front lines? Uh, wait, how far can we get the jump draw? Over to there. No, I think we just move Bara into here, possibly. Into a jump draw trap there. Hopefully the Batch Bee gets stuck and not the Wildling. So I'm going to try and kill the Wildling, but doesn't proc that. Unfortunate, but we can still leap over to here and then take the strike there. So that's all right, and you shouldn't be able to reach you anyway, and you might get stuck and clamped in the fire anyway. So we'll move you over to here. We guardian mode you. The only issue is now Bar is not adjacent to him. So there we are. You are stuck. You're stuck in the fire. You're stuck there as well. Did the pin not work? Why did you get to move? I'm not too sure. Um, let me know in the comments below as to why the coachman did what he did there. I've got no idea. I thought the pin would stick him. Maybe... Oh! Yep. Okay, I just figured out. Don't worry there. Don't worry, commenters. Unstoppable cannot be pinned or hobbled. So we're absolutely fine there. But he's just a tanky boy that does a lot of damage once he gets close, in a kind of AoE fashion. Now, how do we deal with you? We can't attack you from here, we can't zealous leap. We could go for the Cone of Fire, which does a lot of damage through everybody, so I think I actually do just go for this Cone of Fire. It does attack, or it does end my turn now though. But I think that's fine, let's go for it. That's great damage. Did we kill you behind? We did indeed. And look at that burn damage, holy moly. So that Batchby should just die on its turn now. You like to see it. You love to see it, in fact. So, Danny, what do we go for? Rocks for the discus? Or do we... We interviews with the fire here, maybe? Let's move up to here. Let's interfuse with this fire. And does that reach? I really hope it does. It does indeed. Okay. Good stuff. Also removes your warding. We now have the chance to shoot at you as well, but you are kind of blocked. Or blocking. I think we go for the ambush, because you're almost certainly going to head down this way. Seems pretty good, but maybe I just move up a little bit closer so that we're kind of in amongst everyone. Like so. Get the ambush, go for this here. Um, what do we have here? Stalwart. I think we're not going to be worried from you from the north. I think the most pressing issue is the one to the south, so we Guardian here as well. On Beth then fire leashes from here across the other side. Looks like we get the... why do we get the stunt action there? I'm not too sure. Blocked. But you do have two fires, so that should be four damage that you take at the start of your turn. Three damage. Okay, interesting. Charge throw. Where do you throw me? Into the fire? Oh, we dodged it. Never mind. You blocked it, though. You're constructing. The Batch B did not burn to death, which is surprising to me. But he's still pinned, so... I don't really care too much. We can shield share. Can we then flank our own guy? We can. Look at that. Nice. Who needs allies when you can just flank on your own? We can fire leash. That's pretty much all that you can do, actually. I don't want to say that's all you can do, but... Oh, you can fire leash this one, too. Which would do some pretty damn gnarly damage to you. So we're going to do it like this. The Batchby should die as well. With the pass-through damage. Good stuff. Red Air can now zealous leap over to here. It's just a case of whether we can attack from here. So it looks like you can, yeah, you can melee attack from here. So we leap. We then, can we shield share? We can, or we just go double strike. Double strike should have you. 
It looks like we have a 100% chance to hit the wardrobe, because it's just a massive item there, right? So that certainly helps out. Danny, what have you got? You could grasp from behind, but the grasp doesn't really do much. We can interfuse. I think we interfuse with the fire and just throw it into the coachman again. Even if it hurts our own dude, which it will a little bit. But it looks like the warding will stop that. Yep, I understand the risks. Um, but I think that's still the right case of, or course of action, excuse me. As we will now just move up a little bit. And hopefully be able to finish you off with this shot here. So is that going to be the case? Take the shot. 73%. I'm willing to believe. And that might be the end of that combat. So if it is, we're doing pretty well for ourselves. We won't get a level up here, I don't believe. But we'll get close to the Danny. But our party members are getting quite strong now, which is great. We have a tier 2 spear. So that could replace Redia's tier 1 spear. It also replace um, the dueling sword here, which does more damage, more range, and more stunt damage, but less accuracy, stunt, and block. That's a decent upgrade. But Redia still has the multi-attacks, and as such, I think it's just best to give him the better damage. So we will absolutely just stockpile the Starbones Pierce onto Redia. Anything else from that battle? Nope, just that item. We've already hit our stride. We're like a well oiled machine. Oh, what? Too soon? Oh, I get it. I get it. Oh wow, two Calamities coming through. Spectic Tier 3. That looks dangerous. How can I see that? I don't know why it's not showing me Spectic Tier 3. Kind of only jumping between one and the other. Maybe it's just because it was recently added. But um, we will secure this area for sure. We will catalogue everything with these two members once again. We will then scout over here with these three members. We have the next Calamity cards coming shortly. We have four Legacy points, but the next Calamity itself, or Incursion, excuse me, won't be for quite some time. I'm hoping that we can kind of finish off this run before that happens. Let's actually just patrol with these three party members as well, weaken that combat a little bit. And um, Thrixel, plus three range to Noxious, Noxious Tongue. Don't care about the Deepest too much. Gorgon, I don't think I like the Groundskeeper coming in. Not too familiar with it there, but um, just seems dangerous. Gorgon, Sea Caller. We're not facing them too much. Another Gorgon. You know, maybe we just leave these ones here. Successive attacks give the target Mind Worm. What does Mind Worm do? I don't like the idea of that, especially if that means that we lose out on the option to use something. Let's go for this one as well. And we continue patrolling, we continue securing the site. We see what we get. Two ingots and a spell thread, not bad. We get extra block there, which can go for, I think. I mean, Ritter is up the front quite a bit, so maybe he should just take it. Even if he's not lasting for too much longer. We'll go and patrol with absolutely everybody. Um, by the time they get there, we'll be able to do our next combat as well. Again, we're still pretty far away from our incursion. We have to build a pass through to there, however. So I'll have to get used to that one. But um, we will start this assault. But we will start this in the next episode. Thank you all very much for tuning in there. You guys are absolutely fantastic as always. Greatly appreciate the support on the series. You're awesome. Love having you all here. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, if you are, please do remember to give it a like and a subscription to the channel. And um, check us out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Andoy. We can see more content live on the air. Um, until next time, I've been Sandoy. You've been great. And I will see you all next time. Bye for now there, folks. See ya.